Let me first start by telling you what a market lead, market lead does. So basically, in the Philippines, we have two teams. We have a team that's in charge of large international companies like Unilever and P&G, and then you know, large conglomerate like Ayala or JG Summit. And then we have another team, which is the biggest one, who takes care of helping medium-sized businesses, large businesses do their digital transformation, and also smaller businesses get online. So this is the team that I lead. And a lot of things we do, for example, is workshop, digital transformation workshop for probably companies like yourself. So hopefully in the networking time, we'll have a chance to have a chat. Because it's such an exciting time to be in the Philippines today. And I don't know if you can see the numbers on the screen. In 2014, there were 37 million Filipinos online out of a population of about 100 million. So that's 37% of the, the population that had access to the internet. Today, we're already at 76 million users. So the growth trajectory in terms of number of Filipinos that access the internet is simply through the roof. What it means is that for companies like yourselves, you need to adapt very fast because in basically five years, the landscape has completely changed. And I know it's hard, I know there's a lot of new paradigm to take into account, but I'm guessing and I'm hoping companies like ourselves are here to help you with that digital transformation. The, the second number that's really an interesting, especially for someone from France, is the number of hours Filipinos spend online when you give them a smartphone. 70 hours on average per week. That's the biggest amount of time in the world. So you, you have a Filipino, he doesn't have access to the internet, zero hours per week, of course. You give him a smartphone and a SIM card, he will just spend his day scrolling through the web. And that's a, simply an amazing figure. So it's not just that, um, the landscape is changing, that Filipinos themselves, they really, really enjoy their time online. And most of that time is actually spent on mobile. So if you come from a market like myself, which is France, most people started the internet with this big thing called a, la uh, uh, a computer in their, in their house. And it was big, it was clumsy, it was slow. And then gradually mobile came along. But for Filipinos, most of them, the only internet they've ever known is a mobile internet. So it's a second shit for companies. You don't just have to be online, you have to be mobile first. You have to make everything stick in a small mobile screen, which is very, very hard, especially when you uh, have ev never been confronted to the internet before as a corporation. What is driving that usage? First, you know, the country is growing, of course, 6.5% growth year on year, just is amazing numbers. The second reason, and that's the number one reason actually, is that the price of data is actually decreasing. So price of data is not so expensive in the Philippines, it's just that the average salary of Filipinos is so low, if you look at the masses, that to, get, to have access just to an hour of internet per day, it costs a lot of money. However, in the recent years, we've done a lot of partnerships with people like Smart, to give, for example, free one hour of free YouTube per day to Filipinos. And what you see is the minute you give them free access to internet, the usage just go through the roof. So it's mainly a, uh, a cost of access issue. And then the third reason is, you know, prices of smart, uh, smartphone falling when you have Oppo, Vivo, Huawei, you know, Cherry Mobile coming into the landscape, of course, it brings the price of having a device down. Now, every year we release a study with Temasek. So I know there are some people coming from Singapore here. Temasek is the investment arm of the Singaporean government. You can trust their numbers, right? In Philippines, when you say, you know, meet me at 1 p.m., it could be 1.30 p.m., but in Singapore, if you say it's gonna be 42 million Filipinos online, uh, buying online by 2025, it's probably gonna be 42 million, right? They're very, very accurate. So when we run those studies with Temasek, the first thing they say is the number of Filipinos buying online is going to 5x by 2025. So this is a study we've done in 2015. So we're already mostly halfway through that journey and we're actually meeting those numbers. So by 2025, 42 million Filipinos every year are gonna buy stuff online. The second number, which is the most important one, the size of the digital economy is gonna grow to $20 billion. So that's the buy we're talking about here. If, if you just capture 1% of that $20 billion, Imagine the amount of money you can make for your company. So the size of the digital economy is going through the roof. However, if you look at you know, many, for example, retail businesses, they're gonna tell you, yeah, but you know, e-commerce is still 0.5% or maybe 1% of my sales, which is an issue because you're telling me invest on digital, but it's not represented in my numbers. The reason is the attitude of Filipinos, the way they buy, even though they still buy a lot offline, they go to an SM store to buy a product, the research behavior happens online. So in 2013, when you ask Filipinos, 
how much of your sales, how much of what you buy is influenced by digital, 11% of everything they bought was influenced by digital touch point. A digital ad, a social post, a video they've seen, only 11% of what they bought. In 2016, it was 36%, some one third, and then in 2018, 65%. So today, Filipinos, 65% of what they buy is influenced by digital touch point. So even though they buy it offline, they go to Watson's or SM or Robinson's, they are influenced by digital touch point throughout their purchase journey. So it's basically, it looks like this, right? Digital sales, still a small fraction of your business, unless you're Lazada or Shopee. However, everything, most of the things that people buy today are influenced by digital. So how can you as a company influence people into buying your product offline, but influence them online? And that is the big shift. And this is a trend that we see across the globe, is a trend towards micro moments. You know, back in the days, let's say 15 years ago, we had what we called macro moments. Macro moments are big moments throughout the day. Let's say, you know, TV prime time from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. Most people were watching TV back then, so if you were a brand, you, you had to advertise your product during those four hours. Today, we're in a world of micro moments. Micro moments are things like this. Who did this this morning? Who did this this morning? Please raise your hand. Okay. So let's say like 90% and then 10% of people are, are probably lying. So <laughs> this is the first micro moment of the day. It's the moment where you wake up and you snooze your alarm and look at your notifications. And you have a lot of those moments throughout the day. So 150 times a day. These are 150 micro moments, small moments throughout the day where brands today can have an impact on the purchase decision of a user versus macro moments back in the days 20 years ago where you just had that one shot you know, from 7 p.m. to 11 p.m. to influence the consideration of your product. So this is the key shift we're seeing right now. Now if you deep dive more on those numbers, what does it mean in terms of purchase behavior or uh, consumer behavior? You see three main trends in the Philippines. The first one is that Filipinos, because they have access to that information online, they're becoming a lot more curious. And these are numbers that we take from our internal Google Trends tool. And if you look at you know, anything that's popping up, let's say keto bread. Keto bread in 2018 was a thing. It became a trend. And Filipinos, what did they do? They went to Google and they searched the hell out of that term. Same for seed sales from PAL or from organic shampoos. So anytime there's a new thing that is popping up, Filipinos will search a lot of it. So they're a lot more curious and they use our platform all the time to satisfy that curiosity. The second thing that they are, they're becoming a lot more demanding. They're becoming a lot more demanding. They don't expect any random generic experience anymore. They want something that is tailored to them. So if you look at the type of searches we see across the platform, we see a lot more searches around me. And when someone says me, they're expecting you as a brand or as a business to give them information that is related to them not a random generic landing page. They want something that is going to speak to who they are. And that's an interesting trend because 10 years ago, if you were a student and you were looking for a credit card, you would type into Google, best credit card for students, and you would tell Google, I'm a student, give me what is best for a student. Today, people they are expecting brands to know them so well that they will say me and not students. So they will not qualify themselves. They will actually tell you, you know, give me what is best for myself because you know me best. So again, if you as a brand, if you have a, a bank, for example, you're not able to give users looking for the best credit card exactly what they're looking for, then you're giving them a terrible experience and they're just gonna go out to the competition. And then the last thing that we're seeing is a lot more impatience. And the culprit are probably not in this room, but it's, you know, the Lazada and Shopee and Honestbee of this world, they're, uh, they have, um, um, you know, they've made Filipinos looking for things right now. So, you know, in Lazada, if you order something in the next 48 hours, you're going to have that pair of shoe or you're going to have, you know, the, the shampoo that you ordered. So Filipinos are becoming just impatient because they've gotten used to those amazing level of services in terms of delivery time and things that they can order now. So look at things like restaurant open now. They don't want a list of restaurants and then they have to call them up to know which one are open. They want to know exactly what is open right now. How can I indulge in my needs? So as a, re uh, as a recap, they're more curious. They search all the time. They're much more demanding in the type of experience they want and they're much more impatient. 
So maybe one, the, the one key, key takeaway here is, how are your brands or companies responding to those trends? Are you there? Are you responding to those three needs? It's not, you know, a, it's not gonna happen in 10 years time, it's already happening today. The second trend and last trend I'm gonna talk about is something around consumption of media. And that's very, very interesting because there's a lot of things specific to the Philippines. The first thing that we're seeing is the notion of prime time is becoming more and more personal. Prime time, you know, 10 years ago, it was ABS, CBN, and GMA. Whatever show was playing at 7 p.m., everybody had to watch it because there was no choice. Today, with platforms like YouTube, you're seeing that prime time, it depends on you. And I can do a test. If I ask all of you to open your, your, um, sorry, your YouTube feed and show it to your neighbor, you're all going to have different videos because your prime time is becoming personal. I'm sure most of you are doing media in any sense today, right? And most of the time it's traditional media, so it's TV, it's sprint, it's radio. Today with digital channel, the easiest way to do a first digital transformation is simply to shift media money around. You're just shifting money wherever your consumers are. So if people are watching more and more YouTube, it takes just a phone call to your you know, media agency or to your marketing team to tell them, could you adapt our media budget to reflect how people are consuming media today? That is so easy. Changing infrastructure, changing mindset inside your company, that's hard. That's gonna take a lot of time. Shifting media is the easiest thing you can do. So this is what we call an extra reach graph where you're adding, you're shifting money out of traditional towards digital just to make sure you're maximizing your reach. It doesn't cost you more money. It just makes your media more efficient. And then the second thing you can do is, how are Filipinos consuming content today? It's not just about the media, it's what type of videos they really like. And it's very simple to actually come up every time you're doing a media push with three type of content. One long form that you can call meal, you know, that's your Big Mac. 30 second video, sometimes more if you want to. On digital you can have 10 minute ads and it's not a problem. Then you will have your snack, that's your 15 second type of ad that really recounts whatever your brand stands for. And then finally you have your bite, which is you know, bumper ads, six second, short type of formats. So if you create those three types of content, whatever your business is, you're going to be able to speak to the people the way they actually like to consume content. So bite, snack, and meal is the second framework I'm, I'm gonna leave you with today. All right, having said that, you know, this is still for you know, how do you massively impact uh, Filipinos that are watching big shows, but the second thing we wanted to know is what's happening on the niche part? What type of videos are Filipino watching? And it all came <clears throat> through this study here. If you ask Filipinos, what do you expect by 2040? What, what would be a good life for you? 70% of them would say, I want a simple life. I want to I wanna have my own home, my own means of transportation, and I want to be close to my family. This is what Philippine, this is not our study, by the way. This is what Filipinos really, really want. And then we, you ask them, and how, how confident are you to reach this goal by 2040? 48% of them will tell you, I don't think I can reach that goal. And it's a simple goal, having my own home, my own car, and being close to my family. So we went out to try to understand how is Google helping those people achieve that goal? How is YouTube helping you know, people achieve that goal? So we went out in the provinces and in the cities, we interviewed 600 moms, because we think moms are at the center of any Filipino family, to understand how they're consuming and how they're behaving. So on the one hand, yes, they, they have very simple aspiration. They want financial stability, a car, a house, and some gadget, and then being close to their family. And then if you ask them, is that the case? Most of them will say, in my daily life today, I feel nowhere close to that goal, and I don't feel that in the next 30 years, 30 years, by the way, is a long time, I'm gonna be able to reach that time. So we ask them, how are you using, let's say, a platform like YouTube to help you? Is YouTube helpful in any ways? And we found out things that we were not even aware of. Filipinos and Filipinas in the provinces, they're now using YouTube to what they call YouTube University or getting a YouTube diploma. And I'm gonna share two stories right after. Basically, they're using this free learning tool, which is YouTube, to learn new skill, to improve their daily life, to find out information. And it's free, so it's a free YouTube diploma. I'm gonna share two stories. The first one is Antoinette. So Antoinette, stay-at-home mom, no job, wants to provide for her family, cannot because she doesn't have a degree, but she loved to cut her kid's hair. 
So we have the whole interview, by the way, on, on the right side. So what she did, she went online and she went to watch those videos. You know the, 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 the salon in Paris and New York during the fashion week where they make those you know, very sophist sophist sophisticated sorry, hairdress or, or haircuts. She watched all those videos. She upskilled herself and then she opened her own hair salon in her barangay and now she has a job and she provides for her family. We found another story with, sorry, Audrey. So Audrey, she loved to cook. Same, it's always the same story. She loved to cook, stay at home mom, not providing for her family. And then she went online and watched Gordon Ramsay's, you know, how to cook a duck, you know, that kind of videos. But she watched so many of them. She watched a hundred hours of those videos. She became so knowledgeable, she opened her own restaurant and now she's able to provide for her family. So if you're, you remember that graph around personal prime time, we realized that in the bottom, on the, on the personal side, people are watching all those niche channel just to upskill themselves and get a YouTube university diploma. That is the reality of today's world. So we launched an initiative in February called DigiScarting Pinais. It's an initiative between entities inside Google and also outside of Google to help come up with more videos, more learning sessions, to really help people across the provinces get access to skills and knowledge and, and get a better life for themselves. So, so this is what it looks like. It's uh, at the intersection of many of our current partners. So NGOs, the government is also present, telco partners like Smart and PLDT, YouTube creators, of course, YouTubers that want to you know, help, the, help the country. And then finally, of course, advertise like yourself. If we all come together, are we able to provide more skill, more knowledge to people across the country? And that is the goal of this entire initiative.